In this video, you're going to learn how to use all and every. This is a question that a student submitted and I'm really happy they did because I do see some simple mistakes that are easy to fix. So you're going to fix those mistakes today. Of course, I'm Jennifer with j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. In this video, you're going to learn how to use all and every. Now, both of these are used with people and things. They both have the same meaning the difference is the grammar. So we need to look at the sentence structure. The important thing to keep in mind is that we use all plus a plural noun or an uncountable noun and we use every with a singular noun. This is a mistake I see from even my advanced students, but it's a very easy mistake to fix. So make sure you write this down, really important. Now this is a question that a student submitted. Now I can say, I try to reply to all questions, all questions. Questions, of course, is a plural noun. Because of that, my choice is all. Now, I could also say, I try to reply to every question. Now, every needs a singular noun, so I just take off the S, every question. Both of these have the exact same meaning. There's no difference between them and it really doesn't matter which one you use. I'm sure I use both just interchangeably. I would say that all puts more focus on a group, seeing the questions as one group, and then every puts more focus on the individual questions but then within a group. So there's a subtle difference of what you're focusing on, but honestly, that's such a small difference. I'd say that these are just used interchangeably. But remember, we also use all with an uncountable noun. So let's take an uncountable noun that I see a lot of mistakes with, and that's the noun advice. Advice is uncountable. You can't put an S on it. Now, in that case, I need to use all, even though advice doesn't have an S because it's uncountable. So I could say, thanks for all the advice. Thanks for all the advice, okay? But there's a way that we can take our noun advice and make sure that someone understands that we're talking about one. And we do that by adding piece of before advice, piece of advice. That's how a native speaker specifies that it's one. So in this case, I could say, thanks for every piece of advice you gave me, okay? Because piece is now our singular noun that I'm using with every, not advice. Because of that, I need every. So make sure you pay attention to uncountable nouns. Those might be just a little trickier. Now, it's very common to start your sentence with all or every. The same rules apply. I could say all students need to bring their ID to the exam. All students. Plural, of course, plural noun with all. And that would become Every student needs to bring their ID to the exam. Now, notice what also changes here. It's the verb in the sentence. Of course, all students, I need to conjugate my verb with they, they need. But with every student, I'm conjugating it as third person singular, either he or she. He needs, 
she needs. So don't forget when all or every come at the beginning of the sentence that your verb also has to match your noun. So now you have everything, everything you need to fix this common mistake that I see. I hope that answered your question for you. Now there's one last thing for you to do and that's to practice. So I want you to leave an example in the comments below, one using all and one using every. Now just to get lots of practice, why not see if you can do an example where all and every are in the middle of a sentence and then definitely one where all and every start your sentence so you can get comfortable conjugating that verb as well. So that's four sentences in total. Put them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now, before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, awesome job fixing this common mistake. I'm really excited to see you improve your writing because of this. So make sure you leave your examples in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.